Well, how are you doing? I'm very good. All the better for seeing you. Oh, and, thank you. Well, this... And also, I got to tell you, all the better for listening to this gorgeous album. Oh, have you heard the album? Yes, I got I got a sneak preview because oh, I know I know people in low places. Oh, fantastic! Well, you know, it was a it was a thing that the record company wanted me to do all classical old stuff, and yes. I said if I can find a couple of new things, is that okay? They said, well, send them to us. So I found three new songs. And of course, one of them is turning out to be the first release from the album, Heart of Christmas. But yeah. it was terrific to record because I wanted to do, I wanted to have some dynamics on it. So I used two producers. One is a rock and roll guy and one is a sort of more poppy. He does wonderful string arrangements. So there's, there's a different, every track is slightly different, different tempos, different keys. Yes. Yeah. I got what I wanted, which was nice. Good for you. And and but you recorded it. You didn't. You, I, I was reading. You didn't go to Abbey Road. You didn't do it in London. You did it from Miami. Yes, I did. I mean, the tracks were made in L.A. Uh, both of the producers lived in Los Angeles, and that's technology now. Yes. It's amazing. They just sent the sort of files over to uh, the Criteria Studio, where I was in North Miami, and uh, I put my voice, my voice, my voice on, and it was. Uh, it's fantastic to work like that, but they actually, for the recording, both of them came when I sang their songs. They, so they were in the studio with me. Sure. The tracks were made in L.A. Yeah, that's just it. It. it you're right. It is such a different way to do things now. Uh, do you do you do you miss that old way of doing it though, with the with the band around you and all of that? Well, to, to some extent, but I I, th I think if I'm honest. I prefer having, because we talk about how we want the albums to go, how we want the music to go. And then you get these guys, the producers, who I immediately took to because they, they really need, knew what they were talking about. And so then, then they send it to you. And if you've got any comments to make, you can say, can you do that bit again? Can you add more drums or whatever? Yeah. And then I get a chance to just quietly sing um, with a with the full band. Quite often, you don't often work with the full orchestra. Only I, I sang once live with a full orchestra in Studio Two Abbey Road, and that was for a song called Miss Unites. Yes. Usually, for instance, if you're working with Bruce Welsh or Alan Tarney or Terry Britton, they'll make you a rhythm section of drums, bass, guitar, yeah. and then you sing to that, but you don't know what's coming on. Yes. This time, I heard everything choruses singing strings coming in it was fantastic oh no well it, it is an absolute joy i mean people would say well cliff can't make another christmas album can he because he is christmas and and i think about uh, all the the you know all the years of well mistletoe and wine i think about savior's day and all of these great songs and yet here it is and i've got to tell you my friend you sound as fresh as ever <laughs> thank you very much well i've always said that the minute i feel i can't do it anymore i'll stop because at least i can finish with some sort of dignity <laughs> yes, I, you know, i've been very fortunate though Marty, because i i can still sing there are certain notes for instance i can do on the first night of a tour but the second night i can't get it again right, right. just age i suppose you using yeah. my vocal cords next year will be my 65th year of singing and I've been lucky that I've still got a voice that I can use to sing nice songs. So I'm, I'm very happy with. But the you way see, it. but you see, the longevity is is phenomenal. Um, it's here in front of me. The only artist in the world to score top five albums in eight decades. That is, <laughs> there's nobody. I think it's unlikely anyone will ever do ever surpass you on that. You know, the eight decades, what, what makes it really special, it's eight consecutive decades. And yes. it's, it's one of those things you can't plan. Yes. I mean, when I was 17 recording a movie, I only thought, what would I do next next week yes. or next month? Yeah. But I never dreamed that the career would go on for such a long time. But it's it's been really fantastic. But you see, your your, your loyalty to your fans and, and their and their loyalty to you um has kept you there. Plus the fact that you're you 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 were singing, you know, you were singing fresh material all the time, and yet you were giving them all the hits. So you the, the, all of that put together and your obvious appeal, my friend, that's what it is, Cliff. It's it's you know, <laughs> not everybody can do that, you know. Well, I guess so. And I've always loved recording as well. And and, and yeah. really when you think about the eight decades of top five records. That could only happen if you're recording regularly, wasn't it? Sure. So without even thinking about the future, I just loved recording. And so therefore I recorded almost annually. But um, but I never expected something like that. And it's a bit like the knighthood. 
Yes. You can't plan the night. You can't say, oh, well, by the time I'm 80, I'll be a knight. Mm. It just either comes or it doesn't. I know. And yeah. that was also an unbelievably wonderful shock. Yes. And, and, and my survival over the years, it's not just, you know, when you think about it, I've had to battle with a, a whole lot of very gifted artists who have shared that number one slot. We all have shared it. But it, it, in a way, it pushes you on. You, you've always got something. I've got to get this one hit because I know so-and-so is getting one out and I want to be there first. Exactly, so exactly. And, but, I remember, me. Yeah, well, I, I remember you, you were talking in, the, in, the, in your book, uh, The Dreamer, where you talked with, uh, with Paul McCartney. There's a lovely picture of you with Paul McCartney. And yeah. the fact that there was this alleged... Uh, rivalry between the two of you the <laughs> yes we didn't realize that we thought that they had become the favorites of the emi because whenever bruce welsh of the shadows he always used to book the studio for us he'd come back and say look i've called i've called them but i'm afraid we can't get studio tea because the beatles are in there yeah and we thought oh my god and then when i met paul he said to me every time we rang they they said you were in there so yeah. We didn't know that we were both having the same problem, but uh, but we're good mates now. We're friends now. <laughs> no, that's good. That's good. Well, well, well. Again, two stalwarts of the industry, and that's very impressive to see. By the way, I have to ask you, as a fan, the last time we met, um, you still had the vineyard. Is the vineyard still there? Or have you got rid of it? No, it's. it's but my house has been up for sale for a while, and at the moment, there's a possibility that it will be sold very soon. Right. Um, um, I've said the winery, which my partner in the winery has, a, he had a lot of health problems and he wanted to retire. He and his wife wanted to retire. Oh, I and I said, well, if you're retiring, I'm, I don't live there, so I can't really run it. So we sold the winery ah. and then uh, I, I put my house up for sale. Right. I've been going to Portugal since 1961, so I feel I've done Portugal. Sure. And there's a, a some people are interested in it. And, and if, if, if I can sell it, it'll be great. If we not, could... I'll just... We, 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 could, we could do a deal if you're stuck, you know, we could we could help you out if you if you maybe if you could do a good price for me, maybe we could because you're down in Corviero, which is a beautiful part of the world. Oh, yeah, yeah. Corviero is not far away from me. Yeah, it's only about a 25 minute drive, 20 minute drive. Yes. <laughs> wine on tap. I don't know how you could possibly leave that behind you. I know, I know. But sometimes you just have to move on. I, I kept thinking since 1961, I've been going there. Oh, fantastic. And it's a, it's, a, it's a long time going to the same place, but it was a, it was like a haven for me there. I yeah. used to go there to learn the new songs of the new tour, for instance. Lie there sunbathing with the headphones on and running through songs and things. And um, so it was a, like a haven for me there. Yes, fantastic. of course it was. Listen, I must ask you, there's another track on it that I'm, I'm very taken with. First Christmas. This other, this uh, this track on the album, the current album, the Christmas album, it's a beautiful well, piece of work. Well, you know, the, I, as I say, uh, <laughs> I said to the record company that I'd, I'd like to try and get some new songs, and they said, okay. And I found that that one was written by um, Simon Goodall is the guy that, he, I think he started off doing my material, and he did sound like me sometimes. And really? my fans, my fans grew to like him very much. Right. And then I discovered that he was going around and doing helping them with charity work and stuff like that, going and singing my stuff and singing his stuff. But he's a good writer. Right. And The First Christmas was written by Simon and his wife. Oh, that's interesting, isn't it? But still, there's nothing like the real thing, Cliff. Isn't that true? Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, it, it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it. Even though the third, the last song on the album is not a Christmas song, yes. but uh, but it's a fantastic song. It's, it's called Six Days After Christmas. It's beautiful. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's absolutely lovely. Yeah, that's written by Chris Eaton, who wrote Saviour's Day for me and Little Town and a whole bunch of other things. That's right, Chris Eaton. Good Lord. Yeah, you know, very good. You see, you've also had that relationship with individuals over the years, and that obviously, again, is part and parcel of the success, isn't it? Because you build that relationship, and they know where your head is, and they know what sort of song you're you're most suited oh, yeah. to, to sing. Oh yeah, well, well uh, sometimes you, uh, for instance, with people like Terry Britton and Alan Tarney, when they make their demos, they sing them. Chris Eaton he sings his demos. When he sends it to me, yeah. I can hear me singing it. Because sure. they know they know me, they know my style. And okay, I might want to change a few things every now and then to make it completely mine. But when you've got people like that who are really gifted writers, I mean, yes, I wrote with the Shadows in the very, very early days. I co-wrote Bachelor Boy and On the Beach and a few other things. Um, 
But then I suddenly started getting writers like Alan Tani and Terry Britton writing for me. And how can you turn down We Don't Talk Anymore? Yes, absolutely. And, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. And, and you know, Bruce Welsh of The Shadows, we always used to, see, used to say of him, he had great ears. He could come and say, look, I've got these songs. What do you think? And guaranteed you, you like them all. Yes, yeah. And he had, he had an ear for pop music. I mean, yeah. none of us can actually say, oh, yeah, I know which one's going to be number one. What we used to think was, ah, this sounds like a hit. Now, in the days when people bought records, a hit meant anywhere in the top 20. You could be 15 in the charts and still sell a quarter of a million records. Yeah, that's right. Different well, times. Okay. Different times. All gone now, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, I find it fascinating that before I can have a physical copy of your Christmas album, for example, it's on Spotify. So oh, I don't... yes. Yeah, so I don't have to do anything except get my phone out, da 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 da, and there you are. So yeah. the days of going into town on the bus, going into town with whatever money I had to buy your your music in the record shop, are behind me. And of course, obviously, but I'm one of the people who still likes to have a hard copy of of an yeah, album. Yeah, so yeah. Oh, and I see. Incidentally, you're it's coming out in red vinyl and white vinyl and all sorts. That's yes, yes, it is. I mean, there's still a group of people who love the sound of vinyl. Yes. Um, I discovered, though, my engineer said to me, I said, I love the vinyl. He said, have you got any? I said, yeah, I've got about 200 albums. So every now and then I send him six of the albums I like best. And what he does, he said, people don't realize you don't have to play the original uh, plastic <laughs> vinyl thing. Yeah. Because when he puts it onto a CD, the interesting thing about a CD, it takes everything you give it. So if there's a little scratch on that vinyl, it'll be on the CD. So right. he's done that for me for a number of, I've got now a number of CDs of early uh, Ruth Franklin records and things like that. Beautiful. They sound exactly as they sounded on, on the, on the uh, big, big it, 12 inch it, albums. Yeah, isn't it the warmth of the vinyl? There's a warmth about them. Yeah, but what the, what the CD does is, is absorbs the warmth. That's, it, that's the, the magic of the CD. It, put, mm. it takes whatever you put onto it. So if you're in the studio doing technical modern things, it accepts it. That's if you put an old album and put it on there, it's the old album that's on there. That's actually the same sound, the same sound. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, I noticed that you're doing some concerts in the UK next year. Now, not for, you're not doing it for a year, but... Um, is, is there any possibility we'll see you in, in Ireland at all, Cliff? Or will that be it? Because I know you, you were saying about The Voice and about, you know, doing a succession of gigs. But it'd be lovely to see you live again over here. Well, I'd love to. But next year was strange because I was hoping I would get a week at the Albert Hall to do a Christmas show. Oh. And then I got a shock because my manager said, don't hold your breath. Because there was one time when he had to book it five years ahead of time. Right. And, then, and then most of the times you have to book it two years ahead and I wanted to do it next year so they said yeah. no because the Albert Hall now produced their own Christmas shows and um, so it, it's just one of those things that's uh, that's changed so I couldn't do it so we left it all so late so we now I'm only doing about eight concerts in total right and four of them are in London and two are up north Blackpool and Glasgow we left right. it a bit too late to do a really big tour so i may not make it this year i'm sorry about that yeah but I've, my band and i've always enjoyed being there loving yeah. we love island we, in fact we normally go to kalani rehearse there and that's then right. start there that's right and then yeah. i believe you take drink with daniel o'donnell from time to time oh yes i do he, he yeah. and magella are good friends of mine yeah terrific yeah and he's always working i can't believe it always and, working he's, always working he's, he's, he's had he's, much more success in america than ever i have yeah, but well, isn't, that the mad, isn't that the mad thing though about you over the years? I've never figured that out. Uh, no. that, that in the states, it's it's different for Cliff Richard than it is anywhere else. Yes, it is. I've had two top ten hits there, and yeah. that was with the help of Elton John, who had his Rocket Records, and he he loved Devil Woman. So it, it was not being released by EMI America. Isn't that weird? They didn't want yeah. it. Yeah. He took it and got it into the top 10. And he also got We Don't Talk Anymore in the top 10 for me. So I was very grateful for that. And of course, I had success with Olivia Newton-John with Suddenly. Yes, yeah. Poor but Olivia. generally speaking, I have a really ordinary life when I go to America. People don't mm. know, don't recognize me. And I, I quite like it. Yeah. And my friends, my friends always say, don't you miss being famous? I said, well, if I miss being famous, I can go anywhere in Europe. I can go back to England, Southeast Asia, Australia, New Zealand. And yes, it's nice to be recognized, but sure. actually quite a pleasant way of living 
when you do what everyone else does. Yes. I can go shopping by myself. I drive myself. It's terrific. I really yeah. like it. It's and and is, is New York home now? Is that home? No, no, not yeah. really. I, 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 home is actually Barbados. I reside in Barbados. I pay tax in Barbados. And of course, it's easier to come go to America than it is to come back to England. It's an eight hour journey. I can be in Florida in three hours, 20 minutes on, on, on a plane huh. and uh, four hours going to New York. So, yeah, I, I can go there often. But of course, I can't stay there. It's like anything. I've even 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 in England now. Uh, I'm only allowed a certain number of days. And the same thing happened in the States. I managed to get a, what they call a B1, B2 visa. So I could stay up to six months in, in, ah, in America, yes. but not working. No, I understand. And will Christmas be there? Will, where will you Christmas? I'm going to be with friends in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, no. In, in Florida for Christmas. Yeah. I mean, I've done Christmas in, in Barbados and I've no doubt we will do it again. It's quite unusual to have sing white christmas when it's 85 degrees I know. I know. It's ridiculous. I'm of a hot christmas <laughs> it's absolutely ludicrous <laughs> but anyway look um i i I'm, I'm going to i'm going to let you go because I, I want to play one more track uh from the album I, but i have to say congratulations cliff it's lovely to see you look as well as you do you look terrific and well and thank you thank you no. listen before you go even though yes, i'm not sir. coming to ireland i've already i've already had a touch of ireland because i've just done a tv show for the bbc and it's coming out i don't know 17th or something like that of december yeah and who shall i sing with but andrea call no oh my she's she was so fabulous because you know we were supposed to do this tv show about two or three months ago yeah and the queen bless her died and the BBC immediately pulled the plugs and said, we have to postpone it because they want all our cameras. And I understood that. And I, I thought it was a little bit inconvenient, but I forgave the Queen. Yes. And uh, and so, and Andrea was going to sing with me. Then I, my heart sank because I thought, oh my goodness, if we're changing the date by about three months, will she be available? Marty, I'll tell you this. She got the biggest hug from me ever because <laughs> she and the, her sisters and the, the brother. Yeah are now in Australia. But she said to them, you go, I'm going to do Cliff show and then I'll come later. Oh, so she actually waited for me and I said, oh, I couldn't tell. I said, Andrea, I can't tell you that you actually made my show for me because I was dying to sing with her. We had practiced together and we sounded good together. Yeah. And she actually made it to the show. And after the show, she got on a plane and went to Australia. Wow. I think that's very Irish and very wonderful. It is very Irish, very wonderful. And she is in with us next week. For a chat, good. I will say, say you talk with me, and that I love her. Yeah, uh, well, of course, and she's she's a gorgeous girl. She really is. Oh, uh, absolutely. Everybody uh, loved her there. They yeah, all said, and lovely. she looked fabulous. She wore a lovely gown, and it yeah. was just a terrific thing. And I was so happy that she actually made a space for me. Oh, that's lovely. Well, I'm glad you made a space for us today. Um, yeah. I'm a huge fan, as you know, for years and years and years. And I love. I have. I always remember the time I interviewed you the first time. Time the musical in London. Do you remember Time the Musical? Yes, I remember Olivier's... it very well. Yes, with Lawrence Olivier's enormous head. It was yes, I know. It was, it, it was a fantastic show to do. You know, it was one of the. I think it was yeah. the first high tech show. Yes. And yet, when we got yeah. terrible press, you know, I know. You know, they just didn't like it. I'm thinking. And then uh, uh, Fatima the Opera started just after us, and that was a high tech show, and they loved that. Yeah. So, uh, so anyway, but John, very... when when uh, Sir Lawrence Olivia came to see one matinee, we all met with him, and he said, "Oh, don't worry about the press." He said, "They send people who can't dance, can't act, and can't sing to to criticize people who can." Yes, yes <laughs> yeah, fair play. So I I, I just want to say a happy Christmas, Cliff. Uh, you're an absolute joy. And uh, congratulations on yet another great album. Make, oh, another, make another new one next year. Come on, make another album next year. Well, well I'm, yes, I'm, 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 I talk with Warners all the time. So Warner yeah. Music is a very, they're a fabulous record company. I must say they've been terrifically supportive for me. Right. So yeah, I'm sure we'll do another album. Please God. You <laughs> take care and a happy Christmas, Cliff. Marty, thank you very much. God bless. Yes. Have a good Christmas and a happy new year. Thank you, kind sir. Thank you. God bless. What happens six days after Christmas? Yes, right. I better play it now then. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.